Hi, I'm Chef Joe Samara with Taste of This Television here to talk to you about Detecto's Marina Submersible Portion Scale. Now, this design and patented incredible scale you can place underwater. As a chef, we're always looking for scales that we can wash easily, but not only that, we want a scale that's accurate, that can give us the right measurement at any time. The Detecto Marina Submersible Portion Scale has got a dual power source, rechargeable battery, it's stainless steel platter, it's submersible underwater, and has a large backlit 1.2 and high LCD screen. It's got a 10 pound capacity and weighs in pounds, ounces, and fractional ounces. Cleaning is easy for the Detecto Marina submersible portion scale. Just take the unit, run it underwater, and clean it in a snap. So for more information on this incredible portion scale, Log on to Detecto.com. Welcome. This is Therapeutic Cuisine, and I'm Chef Kelly York. I like to specialize in creating recipes that use natural and medicinal ingredients to target and alleviate various human health concerns. Today, we're going to talk about PMS and menstrual cramps. This is a subject that is not real fun, but 50% of the population in their childbearing years will experience one of many of the symptoms that are involved. And the other 50% has got to live with us. Have you ever felt like you don't know why your mood is going up and down, or maybe you feel like killing your boyfriend or your husband? Well, it's kind of natural, it's kind of normal. And the reason that is, is that we as women are on a roller coaster of hormones. We have progesterone and estrogen that are swinging up and down all throughout the phases of a month. You go up, you go down, and all of that we have to ride. You can combat some of the pain and discomforts with aspirin and Motrin and Pamprin, but why do that when you can, you can do that with food very naturally. It's not gonna upset your stomach, which the NSTADs can do, which is the um, um, acidic stuff that can make more discomfort in the long run. So today we're gonna to make three delicious recipes that will help address some of those discomforts with PMS and menstrual cramps, and they also will not make you wanna murder your significant other. Okay, I'm now gonna make a salmon linguiça sausage. My inspiration for this was the very famous and traditional Portuguese sausage. The linguiça is made with a smoked cured pork, and it has lots of wonderful spices and paprika and garlic and flavorings. It makes a delicious breakfast sausage or any time of the day sausage. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a little paste with my seasonings. And for that, I'm gonna add some garlic. And I like to get the garlic from the Emperor's Kitchen. And you can order that online at Thrive Market. Go to my website, therapeuticcuisine.tv and click on the Thrive Market icon and you can order that. It'll come delivered straight to your house. So my garlic's in there. I'm gonna add some nutmeg and allspice. And with sausage, I'll use a little bit of salt. You do wanna watch the salt if you're hypertensive, but sausage needs a little bit just to bring up the flavor of all the other spices. I'm gonna add some oregano and cilantro. Now cilantro is dried here in this case. Um, Cilantro is the same thing as dried coriander. It comes from the same plant. So sometimes people get confused at the store if I write um, in the ingredient that it's coriander leaf. Coriander is also um, a delicious uh, spice that's used in Oriental cuisine, Mexican cuisine. That goes in. The Portuguese sausage and cilantro are just kind of made in heaven. Next, I'm gonna add some cumin. And the cumin is also another delightful uh, herb, it helps um, reduce inflammation. The omega-3 fatty acids are inhibitor to the um, creation of prostaglandins, which are created by the infl inflammation reactions in your body. Um, 
Smoked paprika. This is a must in linguiça sausage. It always has paprika in it. And I like to use the smoked paprika because the smokiness in the sausage just works so well together. A little cinnamon goes in there. Again, this is a perfect spice for um, inflammation, lowering inflammation. It also helps keep your blood sugars from spiking up. So we certainly want to use cinnamon in almost any recipe that you can. It's a lovely spice. A little bit of a kick now is the red pepper flakes. Now, red pepper flakes are made from red peppers. It's actually the seed part, and that's going to give this sausage a nice little spicy back note. Now, with the sausage, you buy yourself some uh, wild salmon, not one that's been farm-raised. The farm-raised salmon are fed grain to fatten them up, and it's usually grains that are um, GMO related. So get the, the wild caught salmon. Um, that's not true for all kinds of fish, but with salmon it's really a must. Also I recommend the sockeye salmon. It has the most omega-3 levels. Um, it's a nice cold water fish and the omega-3s are in the fat. So a fatty fish um, is going to have more omega-3s than a leaner fish. So the salmon I grind that up, I buy a filet and you chop it up and throw it in your food processor. You want to grind it to the level of a, a ground beef consistency or even a little bit bigger if you want to see bigger pieces in your sausage. It's a personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my bowl of spices and I also add a little bit of sherry wine vinegar. This sherry vinegar is an excellent product, it's made by Napa Valley Naturals and it's a sherry barrel wine vinegar. The sherry vinegar is very um, uh, conducive to Portuguese cooking. So I'm gonna mix that up, and the paprika is actually going to make my salmon even more red, and I can, I can smell that vinegar. Now, I don't like to cook this immediately. I'll put this in the, fr in the refrigerator for, oh gosh, um, an hour or two or even overnight, so all those flavors meld. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and we'll come back and we, we will saute them up. My salmon is nice and chilled here. I let it go overnight. I'm going to make my salmon patties. Again, this is a great breakfast entree. This recipe will make about 12 patties, and I like to serve two patties per portion. But you can also make one big patty and serve it, say, in a English muffin in the morning and make a breakfast sandwich that you can eat in the car on the way to work. I'm gonna go ahead and saute these. I'm gonna add some oil to the pan. And I normally like the pan to be a little hotter before I put the oil in. So we let that get up to temperature so we don't have any free radicals forming in our oil. And you can use an olive oil, will work wonderful and really works well with the flavors of the sausage. So the sausage, once it's cooked, if you have any left and you make a big batch, you can put it in the freezer, patted up, uncooked, and it'll be ready to use whenever you want to make a quick breakfast sausage. I also like to use these sausages in making a soup. Another Portuguese traditional soup is called caldo verde. So I'll go ahead and make that next, but let's get these going. And oh boy, I can really smell that vinegar and the paprika, the smoked paprika is so lovely. So I just finished putting in my sausage patties and I cooked them for about two or three minutes on one side, gave them a flip. You want them to be nice and golden brown and cooked all the way through to the middle. So I'm gonna take these sausages and I apply them to the next recipe. It's a caldo verde soup, another Portuguese traditional recipe that uses pork, but we're gonna use the salmon instead. So we're gonna pack those omega-3s in for you and it's delicious. So I'll go ahead and get cleaned up and we'll be right back. I'm gonna take that leftover cooked sausage that we made and I'm gonna make a caldaberry soup. The first thing I wanna do is heat my pot and saute my vegetables. I like to use olive oil because it has a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids, which are good for menstrual cramps. Next, I'm going to take my garlic and grab a spoon here and saute that. Once the oil is glistening, it becomes really easy to swirl around the pan. This is going to sizzle a little bit. Now you don't want to cook your uh, garlic so that it browns or gets burned. So I'm going to add my onions right away. 
And I want to cook them just till they're soft and translucent. Nothing smells better to me than garlic and onions. Garlic is so healthy. Just eat it in anything that you can. And who cares? People say, oh, my breath smells like garlic. I happen to love that. It doesn't offend me. But if you really eat a lot of it, it can actually sweat out of your pores. But it's really, really, really good for you, so eat it with abandon. Next, after these are sauteed, I'm going to add, now this soup, you don't need to use a fancy broth. You can use just plain old water, which I choose to do today. You can, but you can use a vegetable broth or you can use a um, uh, chicken broth. Chicken broth would be good if you are getting a virus and you want to help fight your cold or shorten the duration of it. So I just need a little second longer on these onions. All right, so we're looking good here. We're getting translucent. Next, I'm gonna add about a quarter water. This recipe is made for poor portions, but you could double it or have it, whatever, whatever works for you. Set that aside. And next, I'm gonna add sweet potatoes. Now, the classic caldo verde usually uses a white potato, but I almost always substitute for sweet potatoes in any recipe that calls for a potato. It's high in those carotenoids, that yellow-orange color, and the vitamin A. Uh, vitamin A is very good for battling cramps and PMS. So in the water that goes. Now this needs to boil till the sweet potatoes soften up a little bit. So we're gonna let that go. They will get soft and the water will turn a little bit of an orange color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Yes! The authentic recipes for all of our products are signature to La Morena. The chilies are literally hand-picked for each can. Everything is manufactured in Mexico and imported into the U.S. La Morena is best known for its quality and authentic flavor, giving our users a taste of home. Stock up on flavor with La Morena. Okay, sweet potatoes take about eight to 10 minutes to get good and soft. So let me just do a quick check here. I can, oh yeah, they're nice and soft. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the heat here and I'm going to fish out my softened potatoes and give them a little bit of a mash. Now you can do this with using a blender or you can use a hand immersion blender, but the reason I'm taking them out is I wanna keep some of the chunks whole so you can identify all those wonderful ingredients that are in your soup. The reason I'm also gonna take out some of these and mash it is it, 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 it's a natural thickener. Um, instead of using, say, a roux, you're gonna use your vegetables to thicken your soup. So, a few more scoops, I think. And it's a personal preference. You could take them all out. And if you're gonna do that, just put a hand immersion blender in and mix the whole soup up. All right, so I'm just gonna leave a few pieces in there. I'm gonna hand mash this with a potato masher a little bit because I like it kind of a rustic mash. And love that color. Oh, all that beta carotene, the carotenoids. Now, what the beta, the carotenoids are a precursor to vitamin A. It's called pro-vitamin A your body will know what to do with the beta carotene and it converts it into the bioactive vitamin A that you need in your diet. And anything that is gonna have that golden color, the yellows and the reds, I mean, excuse me, the yellows and the oranges have a large amount of uh, that beta carotene. Your carrots, um, your, any of your golden vegetables. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Again, it's personal preference. Just cut this, or clean this off a little bit, and in this is gonna go back into the soup. So I'll try to do this without splashing on myself. At this point, I'm gonna add another excellent ingredient for helping PMS and menstrual cramps, and that is some kale. So now I'm gonna grab some kale, and you can use Frozen kale, about a 10 ounce package is perfect for this recipe, or you could use fresh. 
And in that case, you would want to weigh it out, about eight to 10 ounces. It's not real critical. The more kale, the better in my book. So I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna turn up the heat, and I'm gonna let this go and simmer. You wanna make the kale meld the flavor into the soup, and also uh, kale is kind of um, tough. So if you're using a tough variety of kale, you want to make it nice and soft in the soup. So I'm gonna let that go and cook down, and that's all there is to it. What a very, very easy recipe and so helpful. So adding that kale is a wonderful vegetable for helping with PMS and cramps. Cramps in particular because it's high in magnesium, and the magnesium dilates, vasodilates your blood vessels, and it smooths out the uterus and calms all the heart even as well. So when you're having cramps, Anything that's high in magnesium is great, and kale is one of the best sources for that. I have one last ingredient, and that's that sausage that we made earlier. So you can cut this into bite-sized pieces. I just like to get my fingers in the food, and I'll crumble it into the soup. So it takes, oh, it, about six and a half patties to make the right amount. You wanna have a little bite of salmon sausage in every spoonful of your soup. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit, because we are really rolling and in it goes. Now this is very crumbly, so these pieces are gonna break up a little bit more. So I'm just gonna give that a nice gentle stir and let all that salmon lusciousness flavor and the smoked paprika that was in it meld through the soup. Again, the soup needs to simmer just enough to get the kale soft. And if you don't like the kale soft, eat it sooner when it's more al dente. Anyway, that is my caldo verde soup. Very simple to make, you don't need a lot of fancy ingredients, and it's very good for PMS and menstrual cramps. Okay, I'm gonna let this simmer for a little bit longer. I'm gonna clean up and I'll come back with our next recipe. Now we're gonna make a vegan bean goulash. The Committee for Responsible Medicine recommends that to help reduce menstrual cramps, you eat a diet that is strictly uh, low in animal products or added fats, that you eat a lot of high fiber foods, this will decrease cramping, will give you more energy, and help you lose weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the ingredients in this recipe that is very critical. When you make a goulash in your crock pot and you're using a raw bean, it is essential that you boil the beans first. There's a compound in that called kidney bean lectin, and you need to take the beans, you can soak them overnight for 24 hours, and that'll help soften them a little bit but it's critical that you then put them on the stove with some clean, fresh water and boil them for a whole 10 minutes. This will inactivate that bean lectin. If you don't do that, you will get essentially food poisoning. In about uh, three hours, you'll start getting uh, symptoms like um, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, and it'll last for about 12 hours. And people don't realize that that's because their crock pot never gets up high enough in temperature to actually boil your beans. If you use canned beans, they are uh, cooked in the can, so it's okay, you don't have to pre-boil them. So I like to cook with raw beans because it's economical and tasty, and the cans have um, chemicals in the inner lining that you want to try to avoid. So it's really better to start with your beans from scratch. And what's not better than the smell of simmering beans on the stove for a couple hours? It's just so homey and comforting. So I took my beans last night and I let them soak and we did boil them for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit that aside here and start with the next step. So I wanna heat my pan first before I add the oil because if the oil is heated too long, it creates free radicals and free radicals can um, damage your DNA and your cells, so it's not really a good way to go. You also want to use a high point, smoking point oil. So I'm going to give that a swirl and I can see that shimmer. I just know that the temperature's right. I'm going to add some chopped onions and we get those sauteing till they're translucent and softened. And that'll probably take about two or three minutes. And I love that crackle. You also start to smell, there's a lot of sugars in onions, so you'll smell the sweetness of it. It's just a subtle little thing that you get in your nose. It just comes up, you know that they're just starting to soften. It doesn't take very long. The bigger your saute pan is, the faster, more surface area you have to use too. If you use a really small little pot, 
it's going to pile up and you don't want to do that. You want the surface of all those onions to be sauteing on that hot pan. So next I'm going to add some chopped mushrooms, about two cups in this recipe. You also want your mushrooms to be preferably oriental kind. Um, they're much healthier. You also don't want to eat your mushrooms raw. For years we put them on our salads. It's best if you cook them. The bioactivity of all the good stuff is best cooked. There's actually some toxins in mushrooms when they're, when they're eaten raw. You have to eat a lot of them, so I mean you're not going to cause major damage if you do eat a few. I personally love raw mushrooms, but I try to avoid eating them in large numbers. Now once the, un the mushrooms start to cook, a little bit of liquid is going to sweat out. And so you'll see them get a little wet first and then the pan will dry out. That's the point we want to cook this to. Hear that crackling? It's a little noisy. Next I'm going to add some aromatics and some tomato paste. And the reason I'm doing that is to brown everything a little bit more, coat my vegetables with a tomato paste, kind of like the method you do when you're making a beef stock and you're browning your bones. With that, I'm going to add some garlic. Now the garlic I've got here is from Emperor's Kitchen and it's an organic chopped garlic. And you can order that from Thrive Market. Go to my website, therapeuticcuisine.tv and order it to your door, sign up. Again, it's a wonderful market that will deliver to your door. There's no delivery charges. Um, and the, all of the ingredients that they sell are pre-screened and are high quality, top of the line. If you want to shop for foods at Whole Foods prices and get it at Costco, uh, or Whole Foods quality and get it at Costco prices, Thrive Market is the market for you. Okay, in goes my garlic. Again, I'm trying to coat all my vegetables. I'm also going to add a classic spice that you use in all goulash recipes is the caraway seed. The caraway seed I also get from Thrive Market. It is a organic caraway seed and it's from a company called Frontier. They have a wonderful line of spices. Next I'm going to add some spice uh, or herbs that are marjoram and thyme. Nice hearty flavor in there. Next is another classic spice that is always included in a goulash and that is the paprika. Now the paprika is a red pepper. Uh, I like to use the smoked paprika because it gives a real smoky depth to my goulash. You can buy that also at Thrive Market. And finally, I'm going to add some celery. What a beautiful green and red color this is turning. And I wish you could smell this. Now I'm getting that smokiness that's coming up and just a hint of the vegetables and the sugar. I'm going to then add some bell peppers. Now you can use green or red. I recommend red if you don't like to see the contrasting green in your goulash. And the red has um, a whole lot of vitamin C in it. So does the green, but the red has even a little bit more. So I love to use either color. If you want contrast again, the green. If you want everything to be red, use the red. We're just going to let that soften a bit. Again, I'm getting those aromas. I'm going to take this off the heat. I'm going to give a little bit of extra oomph with some nice fresh ground Simply Organic peppercorns. And we're going to put this in a Dutch oven. Again, if you cook in a crock pot, you want to boil your kidney beans for 10 minutes to cook off that kidney bean lectins. So I'm going to grab myself a towel here and we're going to take these vegetables and combine them with the drained kidney beans. I'm going to cook these. There's two ways you can cook this. In the crock pot or in a Dutch oven in the oven. 
Now with the crock pot, you're gonna cook it four to six hours on medium, and you can speed that up a little bit if you cook it on high. But in the oven, if you cook it at 325, it'll take about an hour and a half. You wanna just cook it till the beans are soft and aromatic. I'm gonna add them to the rest of the vegetables and beans, along with a little bit of red wine vinegar, a little tanginess. I don't like to cook with a whole lot of extra added salts. They do a lot of things. They make the beans a little bit firmer. You can add it at the end when you're tasting. But at this stage, I like to add just a little bit of the vinegar. And I like a little bit of a kick to almost everything I cook. So I'm gonna add some red chili pepper flakes. And you can also get these from Thrive Market. We're gonna give this a stir. I think everything there is added, and we're gonna put it into a pot. Now, this is pretty dry, so the last thing I do is I add a little bit of added water before I put it into the oven. Look at all that wonderful vegetarian vegetables. This is a very hearty meal. So for your meat and potato lovers out there, this will actually be an acceptable dish, especially if you're transitioning from being a omnivore into more vegan or vegetarian in your life. Now I'm gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna cook it for about two hours. I'll check it in between. You might wanna add a little bit of water if it's getting too dry, but you cook it at 325 degrees and that will give it a nice slow cook so it's pretty gentle. Now one thing I'm gonna do before I put this in the oven is add my bay leaves. Bay laurel is a wonderful flavor. I use it in almost every stew I make. I actually have a plant that grows by my front door and I just snip it off whenever I need to use it or I take the leaves off and I dry them so I can use them all year long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and bake it at 325 degrees for about an hour or two. I will check that periodically just to make sure that the water isn't cooked down till it's dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and we'll be right back. And here we have the Linguisa salmon sausages. Very spicy, a real kick in there when you add a lot of the red peppers. It's very good that it has omega-3 fatty acids and they are actually an anti-inflammatory. You wanna eat as much salmon as you can possibly put into your diet. Very, very wonderful for helping PMS and menstrual cramps. Secondly, we took the Linguisa sausages and made a caldo verde soup. I like to take the soup and garnish it with some nice grated or chunks of manchego cheese, which is a Portuguese type, Spanish type cheese, and just melt that over your soup before you serve it. Now the cheese, of course, is high in calcium. It's also got vitamin D in it, two nutrients that are very helpful for PMS and menstrual cramps. And then of course, the pumpkin seeds, which are also called papitas. It's the pumpkin kernel. It's shelled out of that white outer hull. So it's the meat of the pumpkin seed. They're very high in magnesium. And magnesium, again, relaxes muscles and vasal dilates the, your, your blood vessels. And it actually helps with the bloating and the headaches and the um, muscle cramping of menstrual cramps. And our third dish is a vegan kidney bean goulash. And goulash is a very hearty stew that if you are kind of transitioning out of eating a lot of meat and potatoes, go for a vegetarian vegan stew. I like to serve this on mashed cauliflower and butternut squash and get more of those carotenoids and vegetables in me. You can also serve it over gluten-free noodles, um, rice, uh, but preferably something that's high in fiber. You wanna get that fiber level up um, in your diet. That also helps with the PMS and the uh, menstrual cramps. And that's it for my three recipes for PMS and menstrual cramps. I'm Chef Kelly York, and this is Therapeutic Cuisine. Don't forget to check out all the lovely ingredients that you can buy online at Thrive Market by clicking on my website, therapeuticcuisine.tv. And as the father of medicine said, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. I'll see you again soon.